Today we're going to be playing with Python and Pygame, and we're going to create a simple little paint application. Um, very simple. So let's get started. We'll create a script file. Well, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but use the text editor that you prefer, and I'm going to call it paint.py. Start off like we do all our Python scripts with uh, pound exclamation forward slash uh, usr forward slash bin forward slash env for environment and the environment's going to be Python. Next we're going to want to import our sys module which uh, uh, basically we're going to use to exit the application and of course Pygame. And then from Pygame we are going to uh, from Pygame locals we're going to import all so ex or asterisk there and this line uh, basically is allowing us to um, grab uh, key presses from the mouse and keyboard in this case we're going to be using the mouse presses here in a little bit next time we're going to pygame dot initiate so that will initiate pygame and then we're going to create our display or we'll call it screen so we're going to create a object called screen what type of object is it going to be? It's going to be a Pi Game display, and we're going to set the mode, and then inside double parentheses, we're going to set the uh, resolution we'd like it to be. And I'll just say uh, 1,000 by 600. I think that should be about good. That should be about what I'm uh, recording at here. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we are going to fill the screen and we want a canvas that we can paint on so let's make it white we're gonna go with uh, so we're gonna take our screen object and dot fill because we're going to fill it with a color and then inside double parentheses again we're going to put in the RGB uh, values so that's red green and blue so that's five or three numerics separated by commas the first one is the red value second one is first one's red value second one's green value third one's blue value um, and uh, we want white and white is the presence of all color I'm just saying that because a lot of people get that backwards uh, so white is the presence of all color and the most we can go is 255 so we're gonna go 255 for red 255 for green and 255 for blue next we're going to create an object we're gonna call it brush it will be the brush that we're going to paint with what type of object is it it's a pi game dot image and we're going to dot load the image from a file and the file we'll create in a little bit we'll call it brush.png and we want to use a PNG in this case because we want it to have a transparent background or a transparent layer JPEGs can't have transparent layers so we're using PNG uh, next we're going to take that brush object and we are going to transform it so pygame.transform and how we're going to transform it? We're going to transform the scale. So we're going to take whatever size that image is, and we're going to resize it. Uh, this isn't just in case uh, the image is smaller or larger than uh, what we calculate here. We can say we always want it to be this size. And what size is it going to be? Well, first we're going to say that we're going to take the brush object that already exists, and then we're going to scale it to we'll say 128 pixels by 128 give us a nice square image there close both those parentheses so once again we've created an object it's a pi game image object and we're loading it from a file this is going to be the file name then we're taking uh, that object we're actually creating another object here and we're going to use pi game to transform the scale or the size of it and it's going to be the original brush object and we're resizing it to 128 by 128. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, Pi Game display and we are going to update it. You can do update here or flip, both do the same thing. So updating the display, the display. And next we'll create a clock object and it's going to be a Pi Game 
time object, and what type of pi game time object? Clock with a capital C. And this we'll use in our main loop to prevent our program from running more than 60 frames per second. It's not extremely important in this application, but it's a good habit to get into. Next, we are going to create a variable called z, and we're going to set it equal to zero, and I'll get into y later on. Next, we're going to start our main loop. We'll say while one, and then a colon, and this will this is the uh, part of the script that will loop over and over again. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say clock tick, sorry, clock dot tick, and we'll say 60. And that will prevent this loop from going more than 60 times a second. Uh, next, we're going to have to grab our cursor. We want to know where our cursor is so we know where we're going to be painting. So we're going to say, we're going to create variables x and y, and we're going to set them equal to pi game dot mouse, with an m, mouse dot get pos for position. So we're going to get the mouse position, the x and y coordinates, and we're going to set the variables x and y equal to them. Uh, next, we are going to uh, start our for loop, which is going to check for events. So we're going to say for event in pygame.event.get in parentheses, and don't forget a colon there. And basically what this loop is going to do is it's going to constantly be checking uh, for any uh, keyboard presses or mouse inputs. Now we have to say when it grabs those, when it sees those, what are we going to do? Well, if the event type equals pygame.quit, which is clicking the little X in our Pi game window to close the window, what are we going to do? We're going to sys.exit, which is just going to kill the application, which is what we want. Next, we're going to say elif. So if this happens, and what is it we want to happen? If event.type equals, sorry, this show all capitals, mouse button down. So anytime a mouse button is pressed down, we are going to say z equals 1. So basically what we're saying here is z equals 0, we're saying the mouse is up. Here we're saying when the mouse button is pressed, z equals 1, so that we know the mouse is down. And then we're going to put another l if here. So else if the event type equals mouse button up, so when you let go of the mouse button, z will now be equal to zero. Now we're going to create another if then statement. We're going to say if z equals one, which is basically if the mouse button is down, because the mouse button down detects that once. It doesn't detect constant, and we constantly want to be painting as long as the mouse button is down. So uh, we're going to create the if then statement here. So if z equals one, which means the mouse button has been pressed, what are we going to do? We're going to screen dot blit. So basically we're going to draw to the screen. Where are we going to draw? We're going to draw the brush object to the screen. Where are we going to draw it? Well, we want to draw it where the cursor is, x for left and right. And what we want on the center of the cursor, and since our brush object is 128 in size, we want it to be half of that, so we'll say minus 164. So we're finding the left and right of the mouse and putting the centering the image right on it, centering our brush right on it. And we're going to do the same thing for our y-axis. We'll close those parentheses, and we want to update the screen at this point. So we're going to say pi game dot display dot update. Okay, that's it. That's our entire code. We'll save that. We'll change the mode of it. So we'll change uh, mode plus x for our script, which is making it executable. But we have to do one more thing. We have to create a brush image. So I'm going to open up GIMP here. So GIMP, I'm going to file, 
new. I'll create a new image. I'm gonna make it 128 by 128 and I'm gonna give it a transparent background. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna take a brush here and I'm just gonna draw it right in there. Let's see, right there. I don't know why I can't draw in there. Oh, because I have I have the eraser tool pick, not the paintbrush. Doo. Okay, draw, make my paintbrush bigger. There we go. And I will file save as, and I'll save it in the folder that I'm working in as brush.png. So we just created what our brush is going to look like. So we have our script ready, we have our brush ready. Let's run our script and see what happens. So dot slash the name of the file. So here we are, we have a white screen. You can see our cursor here. When I click, hey, we're drawing with the black cursor we made. That's great. So we can click the X up there to close that. Now, if we want to create a different color, we can do come in here and we can say, okay, we want to create a red one. And we'll just draw a red thing there. We will save it over the old image. Now we'll run our paint program again. Let's put this up in our record window here. And we're painting with a red paintbrush now. Close that. You can do different colors and you can do different images. We'll remove that. And I'll pick another image here, right here. Scale it down. So we'll put that green pepper there. We'll save that over the old one. Start up our script again. And now I'm painting with a green pepper, kind of like a stamp. And then if you want to have a whole lot of fun, you can remove that. And you can take a image such as this one. It's me with a hairnet on. Save that. Run the script again and draw with my face. So that's a simple little way to make a paint program with Pygame. And it's not even a whole page of code. I mean, let's have a look at it again. It's 33 lines of code. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you're enjoying uh, all my Pygame tutorials as well as all my other Python, Bash, and other open source uh, programming tutorials. And I hope you continue watching. Hope you subscribe, rate, comment, visit my website, filmsbychris.com, and visit my forum at filmsbychris.com forward slash forum. There's a link to both those in the description, and I will upload this code to the forum as well so you can download it and play with it, but I recommend typing it out yourself so you uh, get used to doing that. Well, have a great day.